Hi, T.O.T. Carlson back with more rock and roll for you today. Today we're revisiting Def Leppard because Def Leppard a few years ago made the announcement that they're going to be releasing comprehensive career-spanning box sets. I've just reviewed Vinyl Set Volume 2 and also the CD version of Volume 1. Today we're going to be looking at the Vinyl Collection 1, the first of those box sets. This is kind of heavy, although that doesn't really come across well in the video, but... Beautiful cover art with elements from their first four albums. you got the truck from On Through the Night, the building explosion from Pyromania, the diver from High and Dry, and the weird, funky triangle art from Hysteria, plus, of course, the band logo. You're going to be able to put these together when they're finished and create the old triangle Def Leppard logo. Two sets have come out so far. Volume 3 comes out next week. I already have mine pre-ordered, so needless to say, I'll be covering that on here as well. Here's the back cover. It's got some pictures and an indication of what's on here. You get On Through the Night, High and Dry, Pyromania, Hysteria, Live at the LA Forum 83, and Rarities Volume 1. Oddly, this does come with a copy of the Def Leppard EP, and it's not mentioned anywhere on the box, which is really strange. What's even more odd is that it is mentioned on the red hype sticker that's on the shrink wrap, so... Go figure there. So we'll go ahead and unbox this thing and get underway. Here's the top of the box. Just got the name of the set and the band logo. And then the bottom of the box is just, uh, you know, your barcode and copyright information. So I'll just go through this set album by album. Maybe share a few of my thoughts on each album. I'm not going to do a super comprehensive in-depth review of every record, but I will share some of my personal opinions there. So, first things first, we're going to take a look at the uh, hardbound book that comes with the set. Here's the cover. Got pictures of the uh, album covers and so forth. Here's the uh, title page with the Def Leppard logo. Words, Paul Elliott. Photographs, Ross Halfin. Ross Halfin, of course, is a legendary rock photographer, probably the photographer best known for taking pictures of Def Leppard over the years. So when you see his name on one of these releases, that's a pretty big deal. See, like, they got pictures of the album covers, you know, commentary from the band, credits and information. Like, for instance, here with On Through the Night, they've also got some pictures of some of the early singles, and that's very cool. And then the band also tends to share some of their opinions about each release. I really love old photos of bands, especially like super old ones like this where they're a brand new band just starting out young and hungry long before they were worldwide superstars. And then right here, again, I'm not going to go through every page, but like for the high and dry section, here's some of the singles from that album. More of the Ross Halfin's photos. You really start to see the progression of the band from young and hungry kids from Sheffield to worldwide superstars in this set. This is essentially the rise of Def Leppard. And here's the artwork from the uh, LA Forum concert. That LA Forum concert was originally released as a bonus CD with the deluxe edition of Pyromania that was released on CD. It's really bittersweet to look at these pictures from the Hysteria tour and sessions because that would be... Steve Clark's last album with the band prior to his passing away in early 1991. And then the Rarities disc. Here's a picture of some of the material that goes along with that. I'll get more in depth with that when we get to that release as part of the video. And of course, no Def Leppard review would be complete without showing off a picture there of Rick Allen wearing nothing but his British flag shorts. A true classic for the ages. And then you go to the very last page of this book, and there's an insert here. You pull this out, and this is the Def Leppard EP, the band's first official release. came out in early 1979. Again, first time the band ever released anything officially. I love how low budget this thing looks. And they tried to authenticate and reproduce this to the best of their ability. Even got the really old, kind of cheap-looking sticker on there and this plays at 33 and a third even though most 45s play at well 45 but 
The songs on here are Ride Into the Sun, later re-recorded as a Hysteria Sessions B-side and reworked for the Retroactive release, and then Get Your Rocks Off and The Overture, both of which were re-recorded for On Through the Night. This young and hungry pre mutt version of the band is my absolute favorite, and fantastic debut EP. I'm really glad that they included this here, though I find it really strange it's not mentioned anywhere on the box, just the hype sticker and, you know, inside the packaging. But yeah, for diehard Def Leppard fans, that debut EP is essential listening. Absolutely love the young and hungry early band, and I wish more people got to experience that side of Def Leppard. And moving on down the list, their first full-length official album, on Through the Night. This is my favorite album of all time, by any band. I love this early Raw Def Leppard. Tom Allen produced this, probably best known for his work with Judas Priest in the 80s, probably the producer best known for working with the band. This is a reproduction of the Australian release, so it's actually got an inner gatefold that other versions don't have. Very cool and a very nice piece of history. And then we open up the uh, actual record here. The record itself is just in a plain white sleeve, but you take a look at the you know, close-up of the vinyl. These are based on the uh, you know, foreign releases, not the American releases, so they have the Vertigo sticker and not the Mercury sticker like you'd get in America. And that's very cool. It just adds to the authenticity and appeal of the release. Now, by comparison, this is not included in the set. I'm just showing this off for comparison purposes. This is the American release of On Through the Night on vinyl. I got this in a used record store years ago. It says Def Leppard in yellow letters, which isn't on the European and Australian releases. There is no gatefold. It's just the record in there. And then back cover's pretty much the same. But you look at the uh, record itself, it's got the uh, generic Mercury sticker there. It's got all the buildings in the background. So yeah, interesting piece of history. Always fun to compare the different versions of albums. Second full-length album in the set, of course, the first time that Def Leppard teamed up with Robert Sean Mutt Lang, and that was High and Dry, album cover by Hypnosis, who did a lot of album covers back in the day. This is the album that really started turning the rest of the band onto Def Leppard. I mean, On Through the Night had some minor hits like, you know, Hello America, Wasted, Rock Brigade, and some of those were fairly popular at the time, but the band were far from being superstars then, and On Through the Night didn't really do much to break the band worldwide, even if it is my personal favorite album. Got your photos of the band members right here. This was the second and last time that Pete Willis would be a full-time member of the band on an album. First time again, the group worked with Robert Sean Mutt Lang, who had become their go-to producer for most of the 80s. This has tracks like the classic title cut, Bring It On The Heartbreak, Lady Strange, Let It Go, Another Hit and Run, You Got Me Running. A lot of classics in here, including the instrumental Switch 625, showing us just how missed Stephen Maynard Clark is, one of the all-time great guitarists who's no longer with us. Definitely a classic record for the ages here. Many people call this their favorite Def Leppard album. For me, it's not too far from the top. Here's the uh, inner paper sleeve with some great photos of the band. And this was like the first time the band really started getting seen on MTV because of music videos that they made. And then same deal here, you got the uh, Vertigo sticker on here rather than Mercury because it's based on the international releases. I guess because they're a British band, they want to try to stick closer to the British releases and so forth, and perhaps rightfully so. Third full-length album in here, and the one that really pushed them towards superstardom, Pyromania. Second time they worked with Robert Chun, Mutt Lang, and this took over a year to get out because it was such a complicated process behind the scenes, including the firing of Pete Willis. Although his rhythm parts are heard on this record, and he is given credit on the back of the sleeve, so I appreciate that the band didn't just completely forget about his contributions here. Many, many hits on this album. Photograph, Foolin, Rock of Ages, then you got some minor hits like Rock Rock Till You Drop, Stage Fright, Too Late for Love, and some great deep cuts too, like Coming Under Fire, one of my personal favorite Def Leppard songs. 
Here's the back cover with all the matches and photos. I always really like the way they did this one. If you go down here, some of the guests on this album, John Kongos was one of the uh, programmers that worked on the uh, yeah, computer part of the album. He had a hit song in the 70s called He's Gonna Step On You Again. That song later in the early 2000s would be covered by Def Leppard. And then there's a keyboardist credit on here named Booker T. Boffin. That's actually a pseudonym for Thomas Dolby, the guy that recorded the song She Blinded Me With Science. So that guy actually appears on a Def Leppard album, believe it or not. And then just got kind of a generic red sleeve for the actual record here. And then here's our vinyl disc. Again, the uh, Vertigo sleeve like we had with the first two. The last release in here as far as the core studio albums go, of course, is 1987's Hysteria. The biggest hit album the band ever had. It sold tens of millions of copies, still selling big, still the most popular album that they ever did. And this is actually a, a two vinyl set whereas some older releases only put the album on one vinyl. This one does have an inner gatefold, absolutely beautiful picture of the band on stage doing what they did best. On the back cover, you, you sort of have the track list. It's kind of hard to see on the video because it's in the little red frames of the triangle there. But uh, we'll get on with that in a minute. But yeah, 12 tracks on this album, seven were released as singles. Women, Rocket, Animal, Love Bites, Pour Some Sugar On Me, Armageddon It, and of course the title track. But those other five songs shouldn't be overlooked. One of the contributions on there is Gods of War, quite possibly my favorite post-early period Def Leppard song. One of the few songs they've done since then that can truly be considered an epic, and one of my personal favorites. Now I'll pull this up. The first record that's in the set, here you get the band's logo, some, you know, words from the group. This right here is credits, and then you get an essay from the band here. Right here you got the track list for the record. On here you got some of the funky hysteria artwork. Moving down the list, we're going to look at the second record in the set. This time you got all your obligatory lyric sheets and so forth. Hysteria, easily the biggest record of Def Leppard's career. In terms of runtime, it's the longest record they've ever made, clocking in just over an hour. And then now we're going to get to those other discs that aren't part of the core discography, but are probably the reason people will be interested in this set. First of all, Def Leppard, live at the LA Forum, 1983. Great live release from the Pyromania tour. Like I said, this was originally a bonus CD that came with the deluxe edition of the Pyromania record. And the records are just in like the generic, you know, static proof sleeve. So I'm not going to pull those out of here, but here's a look at what the actual records look like. Got the American flag graphic on that side, and then you got like sort of an exploding graphic on that side, similar to the Pyromania record. And then the other record that's in here, you know, kind of the same deal artwork-wise. Yeah, there's a close-up for you. And great track list of songs from the first three albums the band did. And there's a nice surprise at the end. You get a cover of Creedence Clearwater Revival's Traveling Band with a guest appearance from Brian May from Queen. And the date this was recorded was uh, September 11th, 1983. Right down there. Great to finally get a live release from the vintage band because Def Leppard did not release any live albums back in the day. All the vintage live albums that are out now are actually archival releases that came out much later. And the final disc, and quite possibly the most important one in this set, Rarities Volume 1. I'm a sucker for rare tracks, and I'm a sucker for all things Def Leppard. This is one of the main reasons I wanted to get this set, of course. There's our track list, and a look at the record. They even did the, uh, the sticker in the same style as the Def Leppard EP sticker, which is a nice touch there. And the sleeve in here actually has some 
pretty cool photos from the band's early period, as well as some, you know, credits and so forth. I love how they have, like, the fake vinyl ring wear on here. That, that's not real. That's just an effect they put on there to try to be funny. And I think it worked. Great photos there. Now I'll take a look at some of the uh, tracks on here. Side one. Wasted, single version. Hello America, single version. Good Morning Freedom. Bringing on the Heartbreak remix. Me and My Wine remix. Side two. Tear It Down. I Want to Be Your Hero. Right Into the Sun, re-recording. Ring of Fire and Release Me. Now, Wasted and Hello America's single versions are totally different from the ones on On Through the Night. Totally different recordings. For instance, the version of Hello America that's on here does not have the keyboards and it also does not reprise the first verse at the end of the song. It just kind of ends after the instrumental section, after the second verse. Good Morning Freedom was a B-side to the Hello America single, never released on CD until just recently with the arrival of these box sets. Although surprisingly, the band did play it live at their Las Vegas residency back in 2013. Bringing on the Heartbreak remix, that's the alternate version they did a music video for a conceptual music video, not just a concert one, that added in the keyboards, which a lot of people felt kind of robbed the song of its rocking edge. I'm inclined to agree there, but it's nice to have this alternate version. Me and My Wine was a rare track that was a B-side to bring it on the heartbreak. This is the better-known remix version for which the band also recorded a conceptual music video. It might be the only track they ever recorded a music video for that's not a proper album track. These other songs here... Tear It Down, I Want to Be Your Hero, Ride Into the Sun, Ring of Fire, Release Me. I believe all of these were Hysteria B-sides. I'm not 100% certain on that, but like, Release Me actually has uh, Stumpus Maximus, their tour manager on vocals. Unfortunately, I do have to go over the complaints I have with the set as well. It's very thorough and comprehensive, has all the albums and some nice rarities, but there is some stuff that should have been included that's sadly not here. First of all, none of the extended remixes and alternate edits of the Hysteria songs are here. They put out an alternate Hysteria singles box set on vinyl on 45, so I'm guessing you have to buy that if you want the whole picture from the Hysteria sessions. There's also some tracks from really early in the band's career that aren't included here. There are actually two bootlegs called First Strike and War Child. Those had a mixture of songs that ended up on On Through the Night in very different versions, as well as some songs that were not released anywhere else. Some of those songs include uh, Heat Street, See the Lights, Too Many Jitterbugs, a.k.a. Glad I'm Alive, War Child, Beyond the Temple, Misty Dreamer, a.k.a. Tomorrow Seems Like Yesterday, and then a song called Medicine Man that was actually later reworked into Rock Rock Till You Drop on Pyromania. I would love to have had some of those early versions from those albums as some of those songs I don't think have ever been officially released by the group, which is definitely a shame because there's some good stuff to be had there. It would have been nice to get some early live stuff with Pete Willis as well. There is a live concert that is available in the early years box set. Sadly, that was only available on CD, but apparently that's being released on vinyl as a Record Store Day exclusive, so if I can get my hands on that, I'll do a review for that on the channel as well. And, you know, there are a few things here and there missing that I would like to have had in the set. I'm not going to do a super comprehensive overview. I think I've covered most of the major issues. Another one is that it doesn't have the Hysteria in, your, in the round, in your face, live concert, which was released as a home video. I would like to have gotten that here as well. However, I have a lot more positive things to say about this set than negative things. And I think Def Leppard fans will definitely be happy with what they get here. If they don't already own these albums, this is a great way to get them remastered in one great package. Are you a Def Leppard fan? Have you picked up any of these vinyl box sets yet? Comment down below and let me know what you've got to say. Also remember to subscribe to my channel for new content because I'm always posting new videos. And give this one a like if you found it helpful or interesting. I'm Taylor T. Carlson and I will see you next time.